Hello everyone, my name is Jake, and this is Empire's Dawn of the Modern World. Uh, it's a strategy... Uh, oops, sorry, wrong speed there. It's a strategy, real-time strategy, uh, top-down, action, PC game. It's kind of like a cross between StarCraft and um, kind of a Call of Duty, or some sort of, sort of action-style strategy game. Today we've got a multiplayer game, it's Scons playing as the Germans against Roz playing as France. Now, uh, I'm going to have to explain a little bit about this game and kind of how it plays out because this is um, kind of quite quite different from what you might expect uh, and the gameplay is going to be kind of in the background a little bit more. Um, you can expect some more, more shoutcasts, well not really shoutcasts because they won't be shouting but more uh, multiplayer save games just like you'd expect from a StarCraft 2 commentator. Now, uh, the single player and you know campaign is generally played at this speed, which is normal speed. Everything plays normally. Food and this uh, and that are collected at the same kind of rate. But multiplayer is often played at uh, a fast pace, so things don't you know take too long and doesn't drag everything out. But the first three minutes of a uh, multiplayer game, just like StarCraft, are essential to um, a uh, civilization's victory. Many people say that uh, if you don't have your uh, town center consistently producing citizens in the first three minutes, then you're going to lose the game. There are three main uh, resources in uh, empires. There's the food, which uh, allows you to build you know, basic units. Wood, which is generally used in uh, the construction of buildings. And gold, which you can spend to create military uh, units and tanks and things like that. There's also stone, which is used a little, little less um, to create defensive barricades such as towers and walls, but uh, they're not often used, or they're, yeah, walls are not so much used in multiplayer, uh, they probably can be in single player because that's a little more aesthetically pleasing you might say, but towers can be a useful uh, defensive aid. But uh, yes, I don't even think uh, in the modern day st uh, walls are made out of stone, but uh, anyway we can see Roz getting a uh, pretty quick uh, attack uh, rush against uh, Scon's uh, civilians, and he <laughs> decides to go for the mercy. And uh, you know, you kind of probably could have crushed uh, Scon's quickly there, but uh, he decides to wait, which in the end actually becomes quite a bad decision. Look, he's already got uh, five uh, infanterie and uh, flamethrower. I always like saying that because um, I don't know, it just makes me sound like I can be French, which I'm not. I speak a little French, but not enough to class as a native, or at least you can hold a conversation. But as you can see here, um, Rosli, Rosli 5 is doing a very good job of both going for an economic boom and a uh, military doom against his other player, which are the terms for the kind of playstyles you want. If you want to build up, uh, especially if you're playing in a, uh, a uh, team, like a 2v2, which is probably the most common game mode. You're going to want uh, one person going for the economic uh, boom and one person going for the instant rush doom. So um, probably the best person who's at, uh, best at micromanaging will want to go for the, for the doom, just you know pumping out units and sending them over there, whilst um, the other person might want to go for the economic boom where they can produce higher quality units in the later game. Perhaps if you're playing a long game that might start off in uh, the medieval age or World War One. That's uh, another thing that I uh, ought to say about this game. It uh, has five different ages and you can advance to a new age by spending quite a high uh, quantity of uh, the three resources. Uh, so it's not entirely, you know, um, Second World War military. Uh, there is some, you know, medieval times that are involved in this game as well. But uh, if the economic person can, you know, really uh, get up there, maybe even advance to a couple of ages, if, you, if you're in the you know, the more modern times, which is, you know, First and Second World War before anyone else, and that can be a major advantage. Um, what happens, uh, because, uh, you know, the campaign tells a few, uh, a few different stories, um, the five nations, I think, or maybe six, involved in the first three years, which are the gunpowder uh, years, ages, medieval age, and uh, one more, I should uh, find that out, probably an annotation will appear about now. But uh, once you um, get past the last age, which I believe is the Gunpowder Age, you give a, uh, you're given a choice to choose one of the new uh, new races. Because when you uh, start off in the first three, you can be either England, the Franks, or the, the French. 
the uh, Chinese or the Koreans. And obviously, these are uh, only two of these. Well, not all of these uh, nations played a great role in the Second World War. So you can then choose when you advance to the Second World War to become either England, France, the United States, Russia, or Germany, uh, which kind of gives a little bit more of a uh, variety to the gameplay, which is nice. And someone who can, you know, quickly get up there you can really start, you know, putting putting hurt on the other team, which. Uh, <laughs> Roz is starting to do here. He could have done this a long time ago. Um, fortunately, he is really suffering because of uh, Scon's uh, bombers here, but uh, he can get some of his own and can finally take out that critical uh, critical airport. Scon's GG's. He realizes it's all over. That's the game. Pretty much perfectly timed. So, uh, thank you very much for watching, guys. This was Empire's Dawn of the Modern World, an introduction. Expect some more interesting 2v2s, free-for-alls, games like that coming to your sub boxes soon.